Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson three, graphs of exponential functions. Example, consider the story. Daryl lives on the third floor of his apartment building. His bike is locked up outside on the ground floor. At 3 p.m., he leaves to go run errands, but as he is walking down the stairs, he realizes he forgot his wallet. He goes back up the stairs to get it and then leaves again. As he tries to unlock his bike, he realizes he forgot his keys. One last time, he goes back up the stairs to get his keys. He then unlocks his bike, and he is on his way at 3.10 p.m. Okay, so how much time elapsed? So this is time zero. So this would be our time in minutes. Always label your axes. And this over here would be elevation in feet. Okay, so first of all, you have to determine what elevation it is. Usually a story or a level is 10 feet. So if you're in your house, you usually have eight foot ceilings and then maybe a foot or so in between floors. Let's just say it's 10 feet. So if he lives on the third floor and this is the ground, okay, this is time T. The axis, the T axis is our height elevation zero would be on this line here. So that would be the ground. So this is the point zero, zero, which means at zero seconds, you are on the ground. That's what that point would mean. That's what the origin means, but we're not going to be there because Dara lives on the third floor. Well, third floor would be 30 feet if every story is 10 feet. So I'm going to count these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30 then that is the, where he starts. So he is at his apartment level, 30 feet above the ground at time zero. His bike is locked up outside on the ground floor. So at 3 p.m., time zero, he leaves to go run errands, but as he walks down the stairs, he realizes he forgot his wallet. So they don't say what floor he was on when he realized that, but if I start walking downstairs, Okay, it's not going to take a full minute to walk downstairs, so I would make this pretty steep, and I would draw a line. So let's just say he got down to the second floor or so and then said, oh, I forgot my wallet. So then he turns and goes back up. So at that point, he turns, goes back up, and obviously it's not going to take very long, so I'm going to make it pretty steep and he goes back up to his apartment. Okay, that makes sense. So he walked down the stairs, maybe it took him 30 seconds, then he realized he forgot his wallet, turned around, went back up to his apartment, which is on the third floor, 30 feet. He goes back up the stairs to get it and then leaves again. As he tries to unlock his bike, okay, so he might be in his apartment for a minute looking for his keys. So his elevation over time is not going to change. If he is up in his apartment, let's just say it took him a couple of minutes or so to find his key. So his elevation didn't change over a certain period of time. He was in his apartment. Then he finds his keys and he leaves again. And this time he's going down the stairs. get this just right and again it's not going to take a full minute to walk downstairs but this time it says that he goes all the way downstairs to unlock his bike so now he's on the ground floor he's on the ground as he tries to unlock his bike he realizes he forgot his keys well, what did he forget the first time his wallet yes his wallet so he went out and got his wallet so he left made it part way down the stairs turned went back up 
looked for his wallet, found his wallet, left, got all the way down to his bike, which is on the ground floor. Um, and then he was on the ground at his bike for a period of time, unlocking his bike. So that was that took up some time. And then he realized he didn't have his keys. Okay, if he forgot his keys, I hope if the door's locked, he's not getting back in. But anyway, this is their story, and we're sticking to it. So he had to go all the way back up to his apartment. And he is in his apartment again. Now he gets his keys. Um, maybe they're in a bowl right inside his door or something but it would still take a moment to get them so i'd make a little bit of a flat arrow there or flat line as he's in his apartment and then finally he is going to leave again and go back down and hop on his bike and hit the road okay so oh and then he is on his way at 3 10 p.m so that there is going to change my line so that's a 10 minute time frame so at three o'clock he was here and at 310 he finally goes so i'm going to draw this down right to 10 and at 310 10 minutes later he's on his way and he will go that way depending on if the road has hills or not okay so there is the graph of him forgetting his wallet going back and getting it being in his apartment for a little while Going all the way down to his bike, unlocking it, realizing he doesn't have his keys, goes all the way back up, takes a moment to find his keys, and then goes all the way back down to his bike, and that took 10 minutes. Okay, exploratory challenge. Watch the following graphing story. Here's a link to a YouTube video. The video shows bacteria doubling every second. A. Graph the number of bacteria versus time in seconds. Begin by counting the number of bacteria present at each second and plotting the appropriate points on the set of axes below. Consider how you might handle estimating these counts as the population of bacteria grows. So what I have done is gone to this link. It is right here. I will play it. It's a 15 second video. So this is a video within a video. So let me start that over. Hang on. So at so we're at zero seconds, we have two bacterium. At th one second, we have four. So I'm going to write these down as I'm doing this. And I'm going to do it on a separate sheet of paper, and then I'll copy it over. So at the beginning, we have two, zero comma two. And then after one second, we now have four. And if I hit play again, and go to two, now we have two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I have, at two seconds, I have eight. And at three seconds, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. At three seconds, it's 316. And it continues, so that's enough for now. Okay, so there's the video, and it says to graph the number of bacteria versus time in seconds, begin by counting the number of bacteria present at each second and plotting appropriate points. So I wrote it down, and here is my table. So if I have a table at zero when we started we had two bacterium at one second we had four at two seconds we had eight at three seconds we had 16 at four seconds we had 32 assuming approximating because it said it doubles every second the graph of let's see being counted by the number of bacteria present in each second and plotting appropriate points on the set of axes. Consider how you might handle estimating these counts as population grows. 
Well, I just did the first three seconds and counted up to 16, so I assumed that every second it was doubling, so 5 would be 64, and 6 would be 128, 7 would be 256, 8 would be 512, and 10 would be 1024, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, time in seconds 15, at 0 we were at 2, and then it doubled, 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 okay? So, hmm, we need to set up a axis, um, a label for our time seconds. This is number of bacteria. And at six seconds, we were at 128. So if I do, let's say this was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, like that. Then we only had two at time zero. We had four at time one. We had eight at time two. This is just an approximation. We had 16 at time three. So here's 10. 16 would be about here. At four we had 32. Here's 30. Just above it would be 32. And at five we had 64 which would be about here. Um, and at 6, we had 128, which is way up here somewhere. So you see what's happening. It's growing very quickly. Okay, now it says to graph the number of bacteria versus time in minutes. Now, if you listen to that video, I didn't play the audio on it for you. But if you watch that video on your own, then she mentioned that a bacterium doubles every 20 minutes. So if we take that into consideration then we would have a new table. So one bacterium, after one second we would have, or 20 minutes we'd double. So let's redo our table. Okay, so I've created a table here. So the original time was in seconds, zero, one, two, three, four, but in actuality that was an, um, the video was speeded up so that every second was 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, there was only four bacterium, not thousands. Okay, so this is number of bacteria after each 20 minute increment. So if I graph that, what's it going to look like? So the only thing that's really going to change here is our axis labeling over here in number of bacteria and this is time in minutes so after 20 minutes so this is 20 40 60 after 20 minutes there was four so if this was again say 20,000 okay so how could we do this 20 minutes a uh, new time in minutes 20. 20 minutes is right here. There were four bacteria. So the graph is going to look the same as this here, but the y-axis label is going to change. Okay, so I did this behind the scenes. Um, if we were to graph this over time in minutes, I changed the number of bacteria in thousands. So this is 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, 80,000, 100,000. And as you can see, these are really small numbers at first, and it takes a really long time to notice anything on a larger scale, but then eventually it starts to pop and things really start to grow quickly. Okay, so I brought in my time in minutes graph, and now we're up to time in hours. So what would this graph look like time in hours? So we need to now do this time in minutes was this one. I just copied it over. And so this is not going to change. My side here is still going to say number of bacteria in thousands. 
and I'm still going to use the same scale, 20, 40,000, 60,000, 80,000, and 100,000. Okay, but if we think about this, 60 minutes is one hour. So at 60 minutes, we were about here. 120 minutes is two hours, still not much change, probably a little bit more, but not much. And then 180 minutes was three hours, which is right about here. And, and then 240 minutes, 240 minutes divided by 60 minutes in an hour is four hours. So to this one here, we're now up to about 10,000 at four hours. And then at five hours we we're over sixty thousand so at five hours we're up here and then at six hours this would be way up okay so what all we had to do to change this from time and minutes to time and hours was this just took off quicker five hours we were over sixty thousand already so all that did was shorten our graph axis, this axis here, which is time t. So instead of going all the way up to 300, five hours is equivalent to 300 minutes. So it's just happening quicker on this graph. So that's just comparing how what changes in a graph can change our whole outlook on a graph, just changing the horizontal increments or the vertical can change everything even though the points mean the same thing the image the view of the graph can look so much different okay that is the end of lesson three go to your problem set